So I've now completed the lathe part at least on this um, Huangshan AT300 in Norway sold as a Smarty. In the US, uh, known as a Smithy CB1220, and in the UK, as a Clark CL500. Um, the configuration you see here now, as uh, such, is finished with the lathe part, but not the mill part. The milling column will be here, and that's also been documented in previous videos. But what I have finished now is at least the ELS part of it, of the modification. And that um, is a two axis, the ELS from Rocketronics. And uh, the controller here is a pro controller. So it has a large color display. And um, as I said, it controls two axis. So I have also, in addition to just the longitudinal feed, also control the cross feed. I've uh, modified the x-axis then to accommodate the ELS uh, x-axis control uh, with the motor in front. Uh, that was uh, because um, uh, I thought that was the easiest when I have this arrangement with re relocating the milling head uh, to this uh, rear mounted uh, uh, position here. So then it was uh, less room for a motor back there. I had to mount it at an angle. I mean, I could have done that, of course, but I instead used this uh, inline configuration. The safety handle, so to speak, uh, with also the collar here, I wanted to have this, um, makes it a little bit long here. I mean, protruding uh, too far, really as I really would have wanted it closer here. But anyway, it, it sort of functions seemingly at least. And then at the rear here, the, uh, I have uh, two bearings. So a thrust bearing pair here. That uh, really is the anchor point. Exactly the same as uh, is here on the longitudinal axis, where you have the, the boss here that really is the where you have the thrust uh, taken up. And uh, on my machine then, I have the set axis motor here also in line, mounted inside the, the cover there. You know, as you can also see, I took away the top slide because um, two channel configuration like this, with ELS, then you don't need the top slide anymore for, because then you can set long cones and um, do everything automatic. So. Off with the top slide. On this machine, I chose to have the set axis motor in an inline configuration via a coupler. I also added another section on the longitudinal feed axis nut. And also to house the electronics as much as possible inside the cover. The encoder is set up with two gears. So to accomplish a one to one ratio down from the spindle. This also uses the existing, then, um, let's say, gearbox. The drive system here is a bit special. You have two possible uh, belt uh, configurations, a long belt for the three upper speeds, and then if you use the intermediate uh, shaft there, with two belts. Although this gives you speeds down to 160 RPM, not entirely happy with this setup, so I'm going to change this to a Myford Mistro uh, five-step uh, pulley with the poly V belt section. I'm also changing out the motor to a six pole, which gives me more low end torque, hopefully therefore also omitting the intermediate pulley stage. As of now, I'm running a three phase 550 watt motor, run from the VFD of course, and 1400-ish RPM, rubber feet, thereby less vibrations. The original motor is a one phase, so less powerful. And this, of course, then should be adequate for such a machine. I do, however, want to experiment a little bit, so hence the six pole motor. Um, a couple of considerations, I think, for motorizing both axes. Uh, one being, as you can see here, a safety handle. So it doesn't, uh, well, you don't get caught in, in that. And also then it has uh, end stops. I did the limit switch on the x-axis, direction towards the operator. I 
can of course add another one at the rear, but the m main thing here is to avoid crashing into the front part there. And the setup of the limit switches are done in the menu, whereas you have each for X and Z uh, the possibility to go active or non-active and also change polarity so that you can have it uh, uh, active low or active high. So in practical use, the limit switch from the x-axis here will uh, avoid the, the table crashing into the block there when I use the rapid feed. So limit switch will then hinder that. Stops immediately with a message here that you shall remove the reason for that. Then you can hit the stop to cancel that. And of course also the emergency stop here. I've connected the emergency stop to both the breaker and the ELS. The system there will then tell me to hit stop to cancel when this is pressed and back to normal. Those are, for me at least, um, uh, primary safety concerns. So the parameters here you can set. Um, for example, then for the set and x-axis includes uh, backlash, which I have set uh, uh, rather conservatively. Um, they are it's a little bit less than that. And then, of course, the slow and the fast feeds. Same for the x-axis. And also you can set the coarse and fine feed. As well as you have these other uh, possibilities. For example, then uh, what is known as the analog output. So you can set that to be able to control the VFD from the, this here. And uh, this is needed uh, because you have also the constant surface uh, speed um, possibility here when you face. Uh, which of course then needs uh, the controller to to control the RPM output. Playing a little bit with the ELS again, I want to show something called constant surface speed possibility, which I've activated. That also requires the use of the 10 volt external analog voltage control, so that you can get this to control the RPM and also what uh, the maximum RPM should they be for that uh, voltage. And selecting facing, facing or parting would be where you use constant surface speed, and then starting the motor by pushing the button here. And then hit the RPM button and use the knob for varying the RPM for the turning operation as you would want it. And starting the operation means that I can also uh, proceed to select the start and finish RPM in this mode for facing. Revert to the manual for further details. And then looking at the actual turning operation, you can then both see and hear how the RPM changes. So uh, in this case, um, I want to do a demo of how to do threading on this uh, controller. And um, uh, as I said, you can do this two axis. Uh, there is a simpler uh, version of this also called uh, a basic version where you can set one or two axis. But in this, it only takes two axis. So of course now the, these are locked, but I can also then switch them off again because I like to use the lathe manually. For example, then for preparing it to do a um, a uh, thread, I want to do the undercut manually. There is a uh, a menu here also in this called undercut here, so I can do it here also. So I'm setting up for a thread. 4 mm lead over 25 mm and 1 mm depth of cut. Um, I have a pot possibility to set up different uh, threading uh, parameters. 
and I use a normal 60 degree flank angle uh, and uh, a cut mode that is called flank infeed. So then I use the same procedure as you would do if you have the top slide. I can also do uh, tapered threads if I want to. And then I start the spindle. I can try to thread at around 300 RPM. I can go higher if I want to. And I start. And it says that I should do nine passes. I will go a little bit shallower on each uh, cut. So I'll take 15, 15 passes or 16 passes, something like that. Fifty RPM. Okay, it's a test piece that looked okay to me. And, uh, now I move to the menu for Radius, convex or concave, I never ever remember. So if I want to see, I can look in the manual or I can actually start the motor. I can see. So then I can see what that means. Uh, actually, uh, if I don't, don't remember and um, so what I've set up now, I go 6 millimeter in and I, I put a curve on there and then you see the suggested tool so here we go Okay. At least there was a 
kind of a demo effect also because uh, um, but at least uh, it became a, a radius or a kind of a form so this is possible with this ELS 2 channel so let's try a taper external taper uh, up the feeder a little bit and I can adjust uh, of course the, the length and the radius as I want and uh, now when I start the spindle I'll be able to look at the same menu again and see what, what's up so I can try to go six passes on this for the different menus you also have parameters so you can hit here parameter and you can see what you can set up here so I chose probably an incorrect uh, corner radius but you can uh, then in this case uh, set for example then which uh, light feed and the finish feed rate you will have so you can have better uh, let's say um, finish Can adjust the RPM as I go. Also, if I want to. Okay, better finish. 